Hello, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White with OpenXMLDeveloper.org. Today, I am super happy to announce that Microsoft has released the source code for the OpenXML SDK version 2.5 under the Apache 2.0 license. This is going to yield a lot of benefits for OpenXML developers. We can fix bugs in the SDK ourselves, and further, we can create new and interesting enhancements for the SDK. We have a lot of interesting ideas for directions that we can take the OpenXML SDK in the future. In addition, because this is licensed under the Apache 2.0 license, this means that there are no platform restrictions. This means we'll be able to port the OpenXML SDK to other platforms such as the Mac OS and Linux using the Mono C Sharp compiler and the framework that comes with the Mono C Sharp compiler. I'll be working on this as soon as time and schedules permit. So first, some high level information. The repo is at GitHub dot com slash office dev slash open dash xml dash sdk you'll be able to get the source code there and in addition there will be lots of other resources available at that location the source code that microsoft has released is the exact source code for the open xml sdk version 2.5 this means that the documentation on MSDN is still valid and pertains directly to the open source release of the OpenXML SDK. In addition, Microsoft has opened up all of the conceptual topics for public review and contribution. There's a version of the documents in GitHub that you can edit and review. There are two primary contacts for the open source version of the OpenXML SDK. First is Chris Ray. You can see his profile and contact him at github.com slash pugwonk and me, Eric White, and you can find me on this project at github.com slash ericwhitedev. There's Chris, and there I am. You will be able to find lots of code samples, screencasts, and forums on the openxmldeveloper.org website. And further, we're going to have a forum here specifically for the open source version of the OpenXML SDK. I'll look forward to interacting with you on openxmldeveloper.org. My main goal of this screencast is to show you how to compile the SDK and use the compiled libraries in SDK programs. So let's get started. For this first version of the open source release of the OpenXML SDK, it requires that you have some version of Visual Studio installed we're going to use the Visual Studio command prompt in the compilation process. And any version of Visual Studio will do just about. You can use the Express version of Visual Studio. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to build the libraries using the Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows Desktop. That one will work just fine for you. As I mentioned, the location of the repo is at github.com slash office dev slash open dash XML dash SDK. If you are experienced with GitHub or if you want to contribute to the open XML SDK, you'll probably want to use one of the means by which you can get the source directly from the GitHub repository. But today I'm going to really focus on how to build the SDK for typical users. So I'm going to just download the zip file and build the libraries from the downloaded zip file. So I'll click this download zip button and I'll click save as and I'll click the save button. 
I'll open the folder and there's the zip file. I'll extract everything. I always get rid of this extra superfluous directory on the end there. We're going to use a Visual Studio command prompt and run a PowerShell script to do the build. In order to do that, it's necessary, of course, to set the execution policy for PowerShell. To set the execution policy, we have to run PowerShell as administrator first. So I'm going to click the Start button. I'll type P-O-W-E-R. And I'll right-click on Windows PowerShell and click Run as Administrator. It will prompt me asking whether I really want to run that, and I do. And to set the execution policy, you run the command set-execution-policy unrestricted and press Enter. It will give me the chance to confirm whether I want to set the execution policy and I'll type Y and Enter. And I'll click Exit to exit out of that session of PowerShell. Now I'll run a Visual Studio command prompt. Easiest way to do this is to press the Start button. I can roll up to see all of my programs on Windows 8. And here is a developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2012. I'll click that and now I have a developer command prompt. Next thing to do is run PowerShell from within that command prompt. And I need to change directory into this open XML SDK master directory that was created when I unzipped the zip file. One easy way to do that is I can hold down the shift key and right click on that directory and click copy as path. Then I'll come over to my Windows PowerShell command prompt and I'll type in cd space alt space ep. And now I'm in the proper directory. I can see the root folder of the location where I unzipped this zip file. And all I have to do to build the libraries is I type dot slash bld sdk dot ps1 and press enter. Ah, one thing is that because I downloaded this from the internet, all of these files are blocked. So I'm going to press control C and I can use PowerShell in a super easy way to unblock all of these files. I do dir star dot star dash recurse and I pipe that into unblock file and press enter. Now everything is unblocked. Interestingly enough, some things are cached so I have to exit out of that session of PowerShell and go back in. And I'll change directory back to that location and now I'll run bldsdk.ps1 and there goes the build. If I go back into the root folder where I unzipped the zip file and where the bldsdk.ps1 script was, I'll now see this build directory. If I look in there, I see a folder called openxmlsdklib, and within there, there's a debug and release. We can look inside the debug folder, and we can see the DLL and the PDB, and the XML file that was generated from the XML comments in the source files. Same thing in the release folder. So now let's build a little OpenXML program and try this out. I'll run Visual Studio 
Express for desktop. Click File, New Project. I'll create a Visual C Sharp Windows Console application. I'll create the project as a sibling to the OpenXML SDK master folder. You can put these things wherever you want. Console application one, that's a very fine name for an application. And I'll click OK. First thing I need to do is add a couple of references. I need to add a reference to the Windows base assembly. So I click Add Reference and down at the bottom of the framework DLLs is this Windows base assembly and I'll click OK there. And now I need to add a reference to my newly built OpenXML SDK library. I'll right click and click Add Reference and this time I'm going to click Browse. I'll go into OpenXML SDK Master, go into Build, OpenXML SDK Live, and I'll go into Debug. I'm going to link with the debug library here because I'm going to show you how we can now debug right into the source code of the OpenXML SDK. And of course when you get all done building your application you can link with the released version of the library just as easily as usual. I'll click Add and click OK. I'll have to add document format .openxml packaging. I'll add some code here. We'll do something really super simple here. We're going to open up the main document part and count the number of nodes in the main document part and print that to the console. Just as a basic test to see if we can open up a document and do something with it. Well, I'm going to have to also have a reference up here to document format dot openxml dot word processing. There's our very fancy OpenXML program. Now we'll have to go create a test.docx so that we can count the number of nodes in its main document part. Go into console application one, go into the bin debug folder, right click and tell it that I want a new Microsoft Word document and I'll call it test.docx. And I'll add some random text into the main document part, save it, and close it. And come back over here and let's run this application. I'll press Control F5. And it did the build and it ran and it told us that there were 24 elements in that main document part. So far, so good. Now let's debug into the source code. Set a breakpoint at that point and press F5. And then I'll press F11 to step in. And there we are. We're right in the source module package document.cs. I can step in further. We can see that we're stepping into the constructor for the word processing document class and so on. Well, there you have it. We have downloaded the source code for the OpenXML SDK 2.5. We've built the libraries and we've made a little teeny OpenXML program that uses those libraries and we've debugged into the OpenXML SDK source code. I've run this on various versions of Power Tools for OpenXML. Also have tried it out with a number of other OpenXML examples. And it works exactly the same as the released version of the OpenXML SDK, the binary release. This open sourcing of the SDK is really super. We have some 
interesting ideas to enhance the SDK and even a couple of issues to fix where currently the SDK is not thread safe and we want to fix that so that you can build super high performance OpenXML programs. Thanks for watching this video. Come back to openxmldeveloper.org for all the latest news on this open source version of the OpenXML SDK. And I invite you to come to the forums if you have any questions. And further, I invite you, if you have good ideas that you want to contribute to the OpenXML SDK, please get in contact with us. Thanks for watching.